So guys, Atiku has taken a very bold step in asking a United States court to mandate the Chicago State University to release Tinubu's academic record. And you know, our president Tinubu told the court not to allow that prayer of Atiku Abubakar. So the court asked Tinubu to give them solid reasons as to why they shouldn't release his academic records to Atiku Abubakar. So guys, as it stands now, the court has finally decided to release Tinubu's academic records to Atiku. And I tell you, this is not a good news for Tinubu. Honestly, all the things they've been hiding is going to be exposed at this moment. As in, as in with this information being handed to Atiku, it means that Nigerians will get to know where he's schooled, how old he is, and every information about him will be made public. Then the judges will have to compare all those with what he submitted during the INEC meaning that this is going to help the judges to come up with their final ruling should it be discovered that the information he submitted to INEC are different from what he submitted at chicago university so guys let me allow you watch this video did tinubu satisfy section 131d section 131 of the constitution of the federal republic of nigeria 1999 as amended read thus a person shall be qualified for election to the office of the president if a he is a citizen of nigeria by birth b he has attained the age of 40 years c he is a member of a political party and is sponsored by that political party and d he has been educated up to at least school certificate level or its equivalent according to this section of the nigerian constitution Bola Ahmed Tinubu qualifies to be president of Nigeria on the grounds of birth because he was born in Nigeria. He also qualifies to be president because he is above the prescribed 40 years of age. He is being sponsored by the All Progressives Congress APC, also means he is qualified. But did he meet the provision of the last section of the constitution, which says he must be educated up to at least a school certificate or its equivalent? In 1999, when Tinubu contested election for the office of governor of Lagos State, he made the positions an oath to the effect that he graduated from Government College of Ibadan in Oyo State. A few months into his administration of Lagos State, the news broke that Tinubu had forged both his age and academic records. A petition signed by the duo of Al Haji Jamid Serki and Dr. Waliu Balogun Smith, dated August 12, 1999 accused him of lying on oath over his age and academic records. The petitioners alleged that Tinubu's claims in INEC Form CF-001 that he attended Government College Ibadan and another claim that he attended Chicago State University were all false. However, the two fell on the Lagos State House of Assembly to investigate the claims. The House looked the other way because all its members were of the same political party. In an investigative report by the news magazine, Tinubu's claim of having attended St. Paul's School, Aroloya, was found to be false, as the school did not exist as at the date Tinubu claimed he attended it. The news magazine would later find out that his name was not on the register of Government College Ibadan as at the date he claimed. The magazine also punctured Bola Tinubu's other educational claims. The news magazine was at the time published by Bayo Ononuga, one of Tinubu's ardent lapdogs today. One would ask, what happened? Disturbed by these developments, Chief Ganifaimi approached the Federal High Court and sought an order to compel the Nigeria police to investigate the allegations of forgery against Tinubu and prosecute him if found to have made false claims on oath. Chief Haimi was represented in the matter by Ebon Olu Adigburua, now a senior advocate of Nigeria SEN while Tinubu was then represented by Professor Yemio Shibajo, SAN, who at the time was the Attorney General of Lagos State and Commissioner for Justice. The Nigeria Police was represented by Sandia Hindero, Commissioner of Police in charge of legal. They all appeared and argued the matter before Justice Sunday Wilson Egbo Egbo, who upheld the argument that Tinubu could not be investigated because he was protected by Section 308 of the Constitution. Not satisfied, 
Fawhimi took the challenge up to the Supreme Court, which dismissed the case on technical grounds. Soon after the matter, Justice Egbo Egbo was fired by the National Judicial Council, NJC. However, Tinubu had a miraculous turnaround when filing his INEC nomination forms for re-election in 2003. In the same INEC form CF001, where only four years earlier he made claims to academic attainment, including Government College Ibadan, where he claimed to have gotten his school certificate, Tinubu like a chameleon changed. He entered an A in all the columns requesting his academic qualifications. Earlier in 1999, Senator Bola Tinubu had claimed to have attended St. Paul's School and Government College Ibadan, but by 2003, he entered an A on the column for his primary school and secondary school attainment. According to the interpretation of abbreviations, NA could either mean not available, not applicable, not assessed, or no answer. All these were from Atinubu, who, while defending the following illegal challenge, claimed that his academic records got lost while in exile. This is beside the allegation that the NYSE certificate presented by Bola Ahmed Tinubu to INEC as part of the documents necessary for his clearance to contest for the prime office does not belong to him. According to a publication in Premium Times, the certificate presented by Tinubu to INEC bore the name Tinubu Bola Adekunle, indicating that it also may have been forged. Information gathered from those who have details of Tinubu's records revealed that a document showing the differences in name came under scrutiny by the Presidential Petitions Election Court. Judges of the court, Symphony News was told, had difficulties reconciling Bola Ahmed Tinubu as contained in his INEC form CF001 and Tinubu Bola Adikunle. Both names are glaringly not the same. Even Tinubu's lead counsel, Wale Olanipekon S.A.N., could not find arguments to defend the differences as Ahmed and Adekunle are different names. Questions about Tinubu's eligibility to contest the 2023 presidential election on account of his academic records and allegations of perjury will never go away. And as Simon Kolawali of the Cable.ng said in his article titled Tinubu's Lingering Certificate Conundrum, Tinubu must be prepared to answer questions around the omissions. This is one of the many reasons all Nigerian eyes are now glued to the judiciary. Will the court amend the Nigerian constitution by upholding Tinubu's qualification to contest for office despite the provision of section 131D? So guys, so guys, you have seen it for yourself. Honestly, Tinubu's disqualification is very, very, you know, close. It's very near, even despite the, the ministerial portfolios and all that. This government is going to come down. There is no two ways about it. And that's why we keep saying all eyes on the judiciary. Let me know what you think about all this.